back to live <laughs> lessons. Uh, <laughs> um, we're having uh, technical difficulties, which happens from time to time with For the sure. streaming stuff, as you all know, who have watched us at any 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 length of time. We have these technical hiccups every now and then, and uh, we've learned to just kind of flow with them. I, I hope you are all uh, still doing well. If you have problems, let us know in the chat. We'll try and calm it down, uh, <laughs> do what we can. But who knows, some server in Arizona went down, for all we know. So um, anyway, glad to be back. Glad to have with us uh, Earl Clue. Earl, so glad you're here. Good to be here. Can you open us up with that song again? Okay. Now, okay. What, song, what song is this that you're going to play? It's a Burt Bacharach classic, uh, Alfie. Alfie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. such a sweet sound on the instrument. Now, how did you, uh, for an arrangement like that, mm -hmm. um, how did you, how do you work, uh, how do you come up with an arrangement? What, what's going through your head as you're trying to take a melody and put it into a solo guitar arrangement? Um, just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, different ways to approach a melody. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, what I do, I, I try to... Um, uh, just try to give it an extra a flair by going up a half step, yeah, yeah. you know, or or going down a half step, you know, uh, different things that kind of can color the melodies mm -hmm. uh, as as you play, you know. Um, do you work it out on guitar? Or do you work it out on another instrument? When oh no, it's uh, guitar. You work it out on guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But and you, I hear you also play piano as well. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not not uh, uh, not to the extent I play guitar, but piano is a really uh, uh, for me it's a vital tool, you know, because a lot of my writing I, I still write on the piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you what did instrument did you learn first? The piano. The piano. Guitar? Yes. Piano first. Yeah. Yeah. And and where did you grow up at? Uh, Detroit, Michigan. In Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Back yeah. in the sixties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was playing. Yeah. And, and you took uh, piano lessons, I assume. Yes, when you absolutely. Were a kid, sort of. A thing? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any formal instruction on the guitar, or how did you know that you wanted to play guitar? Oh, I uh, always wanted to play the guitar. My mom bought a piano with the hopes that either me or my brother would play the piano, but I didn't really care very much about the uh, piano. I wanted to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. So after some years, you know, I, uh, I was able to 
uh, you know, uh, get the guitar one at nylon string guitar. When did you when did you start playing? Uh, uh, 1964. I was. Uh, uh, maybe 1963. And so you were about how old at that time? Uh, 10. You were 10? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any sort of formal instruction? Take lessons from somebody or something like that? Or oh, did pian I uh, did take piano lessons. And uh, uh, I took piano lessons for uh, a couple of years. And then uh, I talked my mom into getting me a guitar because uh, I was set on it. And she she saw that. So uh, it made it easier for me. <laughs> and did the um, did you have formal lessons on the guitar? Uh, yes. From anybody? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. So uh, you know, and and uh, I took lessons on the guitar for about two years, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it was very good because uh, I had you know the piano background yeah. with it, you know, and uh, so that really helped, you know. I and uh, after that, you know, it was just a matter of. Uh, uh, you know, we go to uh, music stores and get sheet music and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and uh, kind of advanced from that point. Did you come from a musical family? Did other uh, some no of your one brothers? else in my family? Uh, really? Yeah, I was the only one. I was the <laughs> renegade. <laughs> <laughs> I I was the only musician in our family as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. From yeah. A family of, I think one, I have one cousin that plays guitar, as far as I know. So, wow. Um, it's funny how music can change of family. Everyone after kind of my generation, all of my brother's kids, they mm -hmm. all play and everybody's had music in their life for, wow. some, for some, mm. some reason. Um, wonderful. How did you get, how did uh, the nylon string guitar, which you're, you're so associated with now, did you start out on nylon string? Yeah, yeah, and there's, there's a very good reason for it. That, that was, you got to remember, back in the 60s. And that was the time of uh, mm -hmm. folk music, right? You know, mm -hmm. now there were a lot of people playing uh, uh, steel string guitar, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I don't know what possessed me to get the nylon string guitar. I think maybe what it was was that uh, that was a guitar my mom saw and got for me. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm glad she did because yeah. uh, 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 it ended up being a very comfortable instrument yeah. for me. You know, and uh, I, from the moment I started, you know, I knew yeah. it was going to be my instrument. It's easier on your fingers to start with, I think, oh, yeah. on the nylon string than oh, on, yeah. the, then on the a steel string. Steel string was a little harder and rougher on your fingers to mm -hmm. try, and, uh, um, try and play and learn on and things yeah. like that. You can make chords a little bit easier on nylon string. The, right, exactly. The wider neck. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of, lots of advantages for those of you who are, who are considering... Uh, you know, maybe your kids or something like that are starting uh, guitar. Uh, nylon strings, not a bad way to start. The, very width, the width of the strings is a little bit wider. Um, it's a little bit more um, uh, easier on your fingers to be able to, to do that. Um, what are some of the players that influenced your, uh, your concept of the guitar? Who'd you listen to? Who were you excited about listening to when you were... Just learning how to play. Oh boy! Uh, I tell you, my, my biggest influence was Chet Atkins, mm -hmm. and um, just by chance, I was uh, watching a, a television show with my uh, mom. I was, gosh, I had to be twelve maybe, and um, I saw this guy come on television, and you know he started playing, and he wasn't mm -hmm. singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. well, this should be good, you know. And yeah. I'm watching, and you know, I'm like, man, this guy's playing the melody and uh, the bass notes yeah. and everything. And that that was kind of like, well, it's kind of like the piano. You have all of those notes right. available, and uh, it, uh, you know, that was Chet Atkins. And yeah, after that, you know, uh, uh, every week I would go out and buy. Uh, my mom would give me a. Uh, an allowance, and I would try to learn all the songs on a Chet Atkins album <laughs> every couple of weeks. You know, that would be, you know, and the better I got, the more albums I got, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and, it you, was and you fun. play eventually, when was your first time that you actually met Chet Atkins? Oh, gosh, I met Chet, I'd have to say, uh, 77, 70, yeah, 77. And so you were probably in your 20s at that point? Yeah, 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 yeah. young. Um, he influenced so many players. Oh man, yeah, just uh, incredible. Uh, oftentimes we'll we'll uh, <laughs> be playing guitar and we think of it kind of linearly as it can just do one thing at a time, one 
one melodic line at a time, or you're, you're either playing the melody, or you're soloing, or you're doing accords. And Chet was really uh, the first one that was widely known that put it all together. You had uh, the bass going, you had the harmony and the chords, and you also had the melody up on top. And I remember the first time I heard him, it was just like, how, does you, how do you get all yeah. these sounds out of, out exactly. of one instrument at the, at the same, same time? time? You know? um, uh, many of you remember we had Tom Bresch on the show um, <laughs> a few months back. Yeah. And uh, what, a, what a joy to, <laughs> to hear all that Merle Travis style is it, kind of where that yeah. probably started from. I yeah. guess that's where Chet got it from. Exactly. Um, and you're actually here in town for the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society convention, yes, which yes. is going on right now. Going on right now, yeah. How, how, because um, you recorded a couple of projects with Chet as well. Yes, we from time to time we would uh, uh, play on each other's records and and stuff like that. And uh, from time to time, uh, Chet would get called to uh, do benefits and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I went with him a couple times uh, on. Uh, those trips as well yeah. you know he was always uh doing something for somebody else yeah. <laughs> he's always so gracious yes. with, with all of that yeah um let's talk about um your guitar what kind of guitar are you playing today uh paul mcgill who paul McGill. yeah and paul is a really uh dear friend of mine and a great builder mm -hmm. uh, right here in nashville you know so that makes it that makes it uh very easy for me you know it's like whenever something happens Let's pick up the phone and Paul, <laughs> come help me or something. This stuff isn't working right um, now. Your guitar looks like just a standard nylon string guitar, the right? Uh, yeah. What kind of, do you know what kind of pickup? I mean, is it a... Mag Maglish, yeah. Maglish pickup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, does it just get such a wonderful sound? Yeah. Um, when you're playing a concert, are you, what, uh, what kind of... Are you using any sort of processing when you're when you're doing shows and things like um, that? You know, uh, I, I I travel with the sound man, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it makes it uh, very easy on me because uh, uh, you know, especially with uh, just concentrating on the one instrument when I'm doing solo shows, mm -hmm. that's really great. And then uh, uh, when I travel with my band, you know, it's pretty much it's the same instrument, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, uh, I enjoy doing the solo mm -hmm. shows, mm -hmm. and I and I really enjoy doing the uh, the band shows. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, worked out well for me over time. You know, it just uh, uh, all the electronics finally caught up to uh, what they uh, used to be, uh, what what they are now. You know, mm -hmm. because what mm -hmm. used to be was uh, uh, I probably have some pictures at home where still you know I had a, a pickup that was taped to the side of the. Yep. Guitar. Yep. You, you've you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of pressure sensitive pickups back exactly. in the early days. Yeah, yeah, it didn't and sound very good at all. Sound very nasally sounding, very harsh sounding. Yes. Um, pickup construction has come a long way since those early days. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, what do, what about managing feedback uh, on a nylon string instrument? Wow. I know when I do nylon in any sort of live setting, it's mm -hmm. just so prone to to feedback. How do you how do you manage that? Do you manage that with EQ, or do you have any? Uh, you know, uh, you know the the McLish pickup, uh, and and there's several uh, companies now who who have uh, competing pickups like that. I mean, there there is really no feedback. You know. Wow. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's really good. I mean, now now if if you sit your guitar down and and there's a, another note in the room, yeah, yeah, yeah. you quickly know yeah. that you're racing. You know, because it's going to get louder and louder and louder. But you know. Uh, those are the burdens we carry. <laughs> <laughs> As guitarists. Yes, that is true. Uh, that is so true. Um, and I noticed the pickup here, that that uh, it's, has actually six different sensors on it. So it's yes. not like one right. under saddle right. pickup. As, as my, on my nylon string, it's just kind of a one mm -hmm. under the saddle uh, uh, ribbon. Yes. Uh, uh, but that one has individual ones. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, what what about strings? What kind of do you have any special strings, or, or what do you what do you use for uh, normally? Uh, you know, pretty much. I I just use uh, regular strings, uh, Diadario, You know those. What uh, classical strings, nylon strings, come in various tensions. Uh, there's extra hard tension, uh, and down to hard, and I think there's like two other levels in yeah. there too. Mm -hmm. um, which do you do you have a preference on? Uh, I I prefer lighter strings. The lighter yeah. strings mm -hmm. with a little bit of. Movement and give in the, in yeah, the strings. Yeah, and, and the nylons are really good now. You know, uh, years back, you know, it, it would be hard to get a set of 
nylons that were in tune, and especially the the nylon only. You know, it's yeah. just always a, a iffy thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but how often do you change your strings? This is something our 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 learners ask all the time. Really? Um, about you know how often a st set of strings needs to be changed? How often? Well, you're playing all the time. Yeah. So well, you know the uh, uh, the nylons they last probably three times as long. Yeah. The, the bare nylons than the the wound ones. Yeah. yeah. But the wound ones have gotten a lot better because uh, uh, they've uh, they've almost uh, uh, gotten rid of all of the uh, squeak. You know, I mean, you get some, but I mean, it was it always. You know, when I would record in the older in the old older days, you know, uh, I would play. You know, I think it sounds good, and then it's like, oh man, I'm hearing the squeak. I'm hearing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, things have have gotten a lot better. Not perfect, uh, but a lot better. It makes it easier on us guys. Now, your your touch on the instrument is so has always been so sweet, and some of that is is just how you play the instrument. You don't play with a pick, no, and you play uh, uh, play with your fingers, mm -hmm. and more of a classical sort of a, a way of approaching the guitar. Yes. Uh, um, what about? Do you have fake nails? I know a lot of players have fake nails and stuff like that. No, no, no. I uh, just my normal, just my r real nails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know we've had many players that come in. Well, of course, Tom Bresh and some of these others that are really oh. laying into it. Oh gosh, he would tear my nails up. You know, my nails get tore up just on normal playing. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, wonderful. We've got a couple of questions coming in. We have one. Uh, do you have any kids? Are they? Is anybody in your family musical in that sense? Uh, no, I'm I'm the only I'm mm -hmm. the only one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my my brother never he never got into it, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I was the oldest, and he was the youngest, and mm -hmm. that's the way it was, you know. I now, when did you start uh, on your professional career? When was the first big gig that you had? <laughs> I'll I'll, oh. I'll go back even further. When was the first? Paid gig you had, just a little gig that you had. Oh boy, uh, there 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 was a club in uh, Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. and it, it's still the standing. Uh, and it was uh, the best jazz club in the Midwest uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was lucky; I lived about a mile away from this club. Mm -hmm. And uh, by this time, I you know I was in high school and. Uh, what we would do uh, on the weekends, uh, we would get together all of our high school friends, guys who could play piano, mm -hmm. sax, whatever, you know. We'd get together and uh, we'd go to clubs and we'd sit in and uh, have Sunday matinees and stuff like that. Yep, yep. And uh, uh, that was, you know, how I got really started and, and got interested in jazz because I really wasn't, you know, really interested in jazz. I thought it was, you know, kind of far out. Yeah. But there were a few things that happened along the way, you know, as I was listening to music, mm -hmm. you know, I I kind of started to gravitate that way because it yeah. it seemed uh uh it seemed like something uh it was it was more of a challenge than what I was doing at the time. Yeah. And uh uh I just uh uh I remember we went to this club and we were uh you know, a few of my buddies, and we're, uh, the owner would let us uh, stand in the back on the s Sunday matinees. And, yep. um, so we started uh, playing together at each other's houses, and, you know, mm -hmm. once a couple of us got a, uh, uh, you know, driver's license, it was all over, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we were going back and forth to everybody's house, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, most of the guys that... Uh, uh, we were doing this, you know, we, we still, you know, we're, we've been together in some uh, form or other, uh, you know, our whole lives. You know, it's uh -huh. like uh, 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 Ray Parker Jr., the guy yeah. who did uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we used to go from his house to my house because we were the only ones that their mom, uh, our moms would let them let us take the car you know everybody else was afraid <laughs> <laughs> and you know my mom got my mom's car got got uh beat up a couple times you know but um uh we lived through it you know yeah. it was good yeah i had to be a really good boy that summer you know <laughs>
Yes. Yeah. Now, when was the first time you had uh, your first big break? I, I heard earlier on that you you uh, were in uh, met George Benson and were in George Benson's. Yeah, I was in. Uh, yeah, I played for a while. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I I met George when I was gosh when I was seventeen, and oh really? That yeah, was, yeah, 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 and so uh, George was in his twenties at the time, you know, and he was traveling, and uh, uh, so I went backstage after one of his uh, shows, and uh, George looked at my instrument, and he said, man, can you play that thing? I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, he, said, he says, you know that's a classical guitar, don't you? <laughs> I'm like, well, yes, Mr. Benson, I know it's a classical guitar. He said, well, let me hear you something play. Let me hear you some, play yeah. something. And, uh, you, know, he, you know, I played a song. He says, man, he said, you got, you got really good technique. You need to work on that. Just work on your technique says, you know, and it'll come right along, you know, and uh, he would uh, uh, come to Baker's, you know, every like maybe five or six months. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, when he'd come to town, I'd uh, go to the hotel and I'd sit there and watch him play and try to imitate him. And we'd go out for lunch and uh, it was uh, me and some of my buddies, you know, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of like stand by me with uh, guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so you're probably late teens at this point. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and then he, you started playing with him, and then were you on the road? I mean, well, like you know, I played with him uh, once in a while for things. He, he would call me to do things from time to time, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I really uh, got in his band, I think I was 22 at the time. No, oh, okay. And uh, so he was he was playing a series of clubs in uh, uh, the Bay Area, and. Uh, Something happened, and uh, he couldn't find another guy to to uh, fill in on organ or anything. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, he flew me out there, mm -hmm. and so it was like two guitars, bass, and drums mm -hmm. for that weekend. And uh, uh, from that, you know, we from time to time he'd call me up, and you yeah. know, he says, he says, "Oh, I gotta, you know, we can go over here and do this old gig over here. This, you know." And uh, we became really good friends, and that's kind of how things grew, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he's um, been such an influence as well um, on on the other coast uh, yes. for guitarists. Mm -hmm. um, and is still still going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, still going strong. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple of uh, questions coming in here. Daniel WN is asking, what is your favorite uh, Chet Atkins song to play? My favorite Chet Atkins song to play. Let's see, now that's a really... <laughs> almost all of Chet's songs are my favorite songs, so I have to... Uh, uh, here, here's the one that, that I really like the best. It was uh, uh, a song written by Marty Robbins. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, Gorgeous. Down in the West Texas town of El Paso yeah. by Marty Robbins. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> now, for a simple melody like that, that was yeah. in the key of C, mm -hmm. um, and you just, you're just trying to... What are some of the things that you're thinking as you're trying to put that melody to a, a solo arrangement? Yeah, I, put the, putting the chords on the bottom, melody on top? Yes, are, yeah. yes. And then throwing some different chords along the way to create some... Yeah, just to, to uh, take the monotony out of the, you know, some mm. of the, you know, some of the things, you know, it's like you, you really try to look for just a... Yeah. Mm. 
even there, you're, you're taking a melody, taking a regular melody and harmonizing it in, in sixths you know, on, on the instrument. Very common thing to do on a nylon string guitar. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. And uh, all those little combinations like that, sixths, uh, mm -hmm. tenths, uh, yeah. we're just using an octave, you know. Uh, sixth. Mm -hmm. All those ways to harmonize a melody, put the melody on top and these uh, harmony notes on the bottom. It's a real easy way to uh, build a little arrangement with uh, using sixths and thirds and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's um, great. Let's see, we've got a couple other uh, questions in here. Uh, N. Lou Becker 2000 is asking, uh, what is your number one tip to pass along to students of acoustic guitar? That's kind of a big question, broad question there. Um, any tip for acoustic guitar learners? Uh, folks that are trying to learn acoustic guitar? Well, uh, I started, mm -hmm. you know, luckily I started with the nylon string guitar. Uh, I probably would have gotten very frustrated with the steel string. You know, I, I really tried, you yeah. know, and uh, I never went back. But it's, um, I just, uh, what I like about it is, uh, you know, you have a chance to have a light touch. Uh, you don't have to, you know, feel like you're just burdened with, yeah. with uh, you know, the steel strings, you know. And um, so I was always, you know, um, uh, I mean, even to this day, you know, I, uh, all of my strings are as light as I can find yeah. them. And, you know, and, and that takes a lot of, for me, it takes a lot of the... Uh, worry out of it, you know, as yeah. far as uh, uh, just the physical thing of it, you know. What are, the, what are some of the more memorable? You've played with so many folks over the years. I have it written down here. Uh, a few of them, George Shearing, uh, Chick Corea, uh, Bob James, George Duke, uh, of course, George Benson, Al Jarreau, uh, we mentioned, and probably a thousand other players along the oh, yeah. way. What are some of your most memorable musical experiences? Um, oh, boy. Uh, the, off the top of my head, it was the uh, first time I played at Carnegie Hall. Oh, that was wow. That was really exciting. Yeah. And uh, uh, you, you kind of know you're in the big leagues when you're, you know, you're at Carnegie Hall. And yeah. uh, so I was after the, uh, my little segment, you know, I was kind of standing in the wings. And I looked around, and it was Paul Simon. <laughs> I said, man, I can't, it can't get any better than this. <laughs> What else is going to happen to me? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Well, we'll let we've, we'll let uh, uh, Earl rest for just a second um, uh, <laughs> while we get some uh, announcements and give away some stuff, uh, and then Earl's going to play another song here for us. Um, we've got. Um, wow, we've kind of declared this jazz month. Um, and so we offered some uh, jazz resources this month. Um, one of them is uh, the real book. Um, so I was trying to think of great mm -hmm. jazz learning resources. I know I've played a million gigs, and this has been the one thing on my music stand has been the real book. Uh, our resources sale this month, we offered the real book one. This is the first edition. We offered that um, last year, and... Um, I wanted to, they have a real book too that has a whole other batch of tunes in it, uh, Just the Way You Are and Georgia and all sorts of great songs that didn't, uh, weren't in the first edition, so they're in the real book too. And so that is part of our uh, resources for July. Also a great book um, called uh, Creative Chord Substitutions for Jazz Guitar. It's been around, I don't know, since the 80s by, mm -hmm. by Ed Arkin. Um, that is a uh, kind of a jazz theory book, but written from a guitar player's perspective. And that book has taught me more than probably any other single book. Um, and so I offered, we offered that in our, in our resources for this month as well. Uh, so check those out. The links uh, for that, Fabian, our wonderful unpaid moderator, is uh, putting those links up there for you. You can also go down, if you're looking at the Ustream window, you can go down to the blue button. Uh, underneath the Ustream window, and that will get you to uh, all the resources that we're offering um, for this wonderful jazz month that we're that we're doing right now. Um, but I wanted to give one of those away. Um, so we're going to give away, this is a real book one. This is the first real book, and we're going to give that away to one of uh, you lucky folks. 
Um, the winner of this is U Relax. U R E L A X. Um, U Relax, I guess is how you do it. Uh, U Relax, you have just won uh, Real Book One. So, congratulations. That's always fun. Um, Go ahead and uh, send us an email at service at legacyinstruction.com with your mailing address and phone number and all that sort of stuff, and we will get that out to you and uh, go from there. Um, before we play one more song, I want to talk about, um, you've got so many great things coming up here. Um, I saw on your schedule that you're doing uh, a week in at the Blue Note in uh, New York City coming yeah, up. Yeah, coming right up. Yeah. That's in, let's see, what do I have here? I have... The end of July, July 29th through August 3rd, yes. uh, which correlates to the release of your new CD. How about that? <laughs> Funny how that works. <laughs> and tell us about the new CD. What, what's, what's the name of it? Uh, it's called Handpicked Guitar. Handpicked Guitar. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, these are all songs that I have loved and enjoyed, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a, a pretty good pretty good title for what it was you know yes. because every all the songs are different in style and everything but they're all favorites of mine you mm -hmm. know so is it a solo project or are you with a band uh it's it's uh it's a bit of well it's a bit of uh both in a way because most of the uh uh songs are solo but i did some duets uh, i did uh, uh a duet with uh, bill frizzell yeah and i did uh a duet with uh uh, Jake Shimabukuru. Oh, yeah. And uh, guys, let me let me not blank out on my <laughs> my third. Help me. <laughs> you can't can't think right now. I'm Vince Gill. Vince Gosh, Gill. Gosh, I just played with him last and night. And you were playing with Vince Gill <laughs> last night. I tell you, this is the week to be in Nashville. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, the Nam Convention, the music convention, but it's also the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society convention, which yes. is kind of the re main reason that you're down is yeah, to, yeah. to play for that. Because there's all these players in town, uh, there's been some just ridiculous music things happening this week, mm -hmm. and one of them was last night at 3rd yes. uh, and Lindsley, wonderful music club here in Nashville. Yeah, just uh, amazing. With the Time Jumpers, Grammy-winning Time Jumpers, and you sat in with that? Did they know you were coming? Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I called Vince before, make sure. Yeah, <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> uh, it's a fantastic venue. Uh, yeah, it is. Gorgeous sound system, and I I saw a clip that you put up in your Facebook page. Looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Looked a lot like of a lot fun. of fun. A lot Lots of fun. Of fun. Um, you've got some other things coming up. Um, I have done here October 11th that you've got. You're going to be a part of the Smooth Jazz Cruise uh, with gosh, just about <laughs> of 30 different people. I tell you, everybody. Uh, on there was fantastic, uh, and you do that every year, the Smooth Jazz Cruise. You know, it, it kind of it it moves from place to place, you know, and time to time. You know, there there's there's several cruises, but uh, this one is uh, is a really nice one. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, they all are very nice, but but this one is a it's a good time of year, I guess I'm saying to yeah. to take it. Yeah, and well, let's and let's talk about and then you do your weekend of jazz. Um, oh yeah. Uh, events mm -hmm. and i have down here uh got one coming up in november yes our earl clues weekend of jazz and then another one in in april uh following uh, april and you can look at those we didn't have the link fabian i'm sorry so sorry i didn't give you the link for that if you're interested in being a part of that uh you can go to weekendofjazz.com and uh, get all the information about the upcoming um events on that. T tell us what those are about, the Weekend of Jazz. Uh, it, it, it's something that I kind of uh, stumbled onto, you know. It's, uh, uh, I was looking for something a little different than, than uh, picking up the phone. You know, I, uh, we, we were able to uh, uh, get some people together who, who uh, like the idea of having jazz weekends, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, so I host uh, in the spring and in the fall yeah. uh, uh, Earl Clues Weekend of Jazz. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, I've yeah. heard such great things about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Before we uh, move on to bigger and better things, can you play us? Can you play us another song? Oh yeah. What oh. are you going to play for us? What is this? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Um,
gorgeous. Uh, what's the name of that song? Uh, Marabella. And that's a song that you wrote? Yes. Because I, I remember I've, I've got the project that that was on. Oh, from, wow. That was from a long time long ago. Long back, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, do you remember what project that was from? You've done, I have written down here in my notes that you've done 32, 33 CDs along yeah. the way. Yeah. Um, wow. Just an amazing, prolific career <laughs> that has blessed so many of us oh, along gosh. the way. Yeah. Oh, just thank you. Thank oh, you, because uh, this it, is really fun. Um, all right, we're going to take a quick break uh, to kind of allow Earl to get a, a drink of water and uh, switch some things here on the set. Hang around for the second half. Uh, actually, just the last little bit. Uh, Earl's going to play a little bit more. We're going to answer some of your questions, and uh, we'll see in just a few moments. Stick with us. Hey there, Steve Krenz here, and I have some exciting news. We're finally finished with our brand new guitar course. You know, when we asked our students what they would most like to see from us next, it was overwhelming, fingerstyle guitar. So that's right, we've created fingerstyle guitar. Learn and master spotlight. Fingerstyle guitar is our newest addition to our line of guitar courses. This is the result of popular demand from our friends and followers, and I couldn't be more pleased with how it's turned out. You know, imagine sitting down with just you and your guitar and playing a solo fingerstyle arrangement of one of your favorites. You know, I created this course so you'll have the tools to do just that. We've got special guests, interviews, basic, intermediate, advanced lessons and everything from traditional acoustic fingerstyle playing to arranging songs for solo guitar to classical jazz guitar, Merle Travis style picking with several stops musically in between. This is going to be a very thorough course, so get ready to take your guitar playing to an entirely new place. Thanks for sticking around with us. Um, thanks for your patience on that. And hey, let's give away one more thing. I wanted to give away, uh, this is a DVD. This is Joe, the great Joe Pass. Yeah. Um, I was looking today. Uh, he died in 1994. That's almost 20 years ago. Yeah. It's hard to believe that uh, he's been gone that long. I know. Um, this is a Joe Pass DVD, Joe Pass Jazz Lines. We're going to give this away. Um, wow, this is him talking about scales, arpeggio, his approach to minor seventh, major seventh chords, these melodic lines. Wow, if you're interested in learning about jazz, solo guitar arrangements of jazz, um, wow, Joe Pass was a true master, true master. Um, someone's going to win this. The winner of this uh, is Keegs61. Keegs61, uh, you have just won a Joe Pass Jazz Lines DVD. Um, so send us your information, Keegs. I think I know that. Keegs, are you, um, <laughs> you're one of our main folks on the board. So um, congratulations. Thanks for, thanks for uh, doing that. Um, all right. We had a couple of questions that have come in before we uh, wrap it up. Um, Tobin, Cito, Tobin Cito is asking, um, how do you select the songs to record for a project? Ah, that's, that's always an interesting dilemma. Uh, it, it depends on what flavor I want the recording to be. Uh, do I want to do a, a trio, solo, uh, orchestra record, you know. Mm -hmm. All of those things I kind of look at. And, and you've done all of those oh, over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, it's just a matter of um, uh, uh, with this, this new project that, that is just coming out, you know, it, it's... It had been a long time since I, uh, uh, you know, I've done a few solo records, but I've never uh, did anything very much where uh, you'd sit across from the the, the guy and uh, you know you'd make your your music, you know. Yeah. So uh, that was exciting for me to uh, put that together mm -hmm. with some of my friends. You know, it really it was uh, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's always duets. That's the one thing that I really think is very unique to uh, guys like us guitar players. You know, mm -hmm. we have, th th these are like mini pianos in yes. a way. And, uh, you know, you, you, you have that ability to take it out of your case, sit down. It's almost like a friend. Yes. You know, you, you, know, yeah. you know everything I'm saying, yeah. you know. And uh, uh, there's nothing better. Yeah. Nothing better. That's right. <laughs> Coming home after a long, hard day. That's right. At work, just to sit down and play and enjoy your instrument. I know many of you are just in battle right now with trying to learn, and you're wrestling with whatever your 
the particular mountain you're wrestling with right now, whether it be bar chords or uh, mm. learning how to solo or, or whatever. Uh, but always leave time uh, in your life at the end of the day to pick up and just make music with your guitar. Uh, it's one of the most important things that you can do is uh, to keep that relationship, that musical uh, love for your instrument. Uh, if you let it, if you let it, and you just think about the task too much, it'll become dry to you. But just, it's fun to just play, just play. That's why they call it playing. Um, <laughs> Hey, I had a couple of questions that were written in. Uh, PSM32 uh, from New York uh, says, um, let's see, my all-time favorites, uh, songs from Earl, Dr. Macumba, Vanetta, uh, Laughter in the Rain, mm -hmm. Deborah Ann, The Traveler, Night Drive, Back in Central Park. Of course, the collaborations with George Benson. Gosh, that, which was a great project. When did yeah. you do that, the collaboration? Uh, that, was, that was in the early 80s. Early 80s. Yeah. And it was about that same time that you uh, worked with Bob James and you got the best Grammy for, for Best Pop Instrumental. Yeah, Is that right? Yeah. Because that, that was like 79, 80 something. Right like in that, there. Right yeah. in there. 79. Um, I think, what yeah. was the name of that song that you got the Grammy on? Do you no, remember? It was, it was for the entire album, but now I can't oh, okay. remember. Now I can't remember the name of the album. Uh, that was 20 <laughs> albums ago. It's hard to keep up, for yeah. goodness sake. Um, he goes on to ask. Um, um, is it possible for Earl to talk about how you developed your sense of uh, touch on the instrument? You know, when you, he goes on to say, when I hear him, I think of a skater gliding on ice or throwing uh, a rock across a lake and watching it skim, just such a light touch on the instrument. Um, how, did you, how did you come up with that? Is that? That just probably came out of your own messing around with the instrument, yeah, just your sweet yeah. sound on the instrument. Yeah, just uh, the guitar more than, than my sound, you know, but uh, I just... Uh, Really like you know the lightness of uh, yeah. acoustic guitar, nylon string guitar. N nylon string guitar, played in a fingerstyle way without a pick. Yes. And uh, boy, you can just tell if it's a song by Earl. You could you could tell it within a couple of couple of measures. Just it's such a sweet, uh, sweet, beautiful sound to it. Um, Stefan from Polska, Krakow, Poland, says, um, I have a question. Hope it's not too basic. Can you ask Earl about your guitar playing position? Um, you know, how you hold the guitar. I notice you're using a strap. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever play without a strap? Do you, do you use a footstool sometimes? Uh, I, generally, uh, generally mm -hmm. I'll play with a strap. Mm -hmm. Now, now uh, uh, you know, I've done both. You know, I, uh, uh, you know there's been times when I uh, just sit on a stool and, yeah. mm -hmm. and play. You know, I, uh, for a while, you know, I was... Uh, experimenting mm -hmm. you know I, I was actually sitting on smaller stools and playing but it seemed to me to be kind of uh, old-fashioned yeah. you know and so I wanted to at least be as you know at uh, high as yeah, yeah. you know your own height you know it's mm -hmm. you know because it's kind of hard to to engage an audience when you're right. sitting down like that you know yeah. so so um, that's wh why I you know I you know tried to Go that way, it always right looks there. so comfortable in yes. how you play, and you're, it's angled. Uh, you can't really see from that angle, but his guitar is angled slightly up, so it's not flat like that. Right. It's angled slightly up, so you mm -hmm. can kind of see what you're doing on the instrument. Right, exactly. And, uh, from there, or from. And you notice position. even when he has it on its leg, or when he's uh, holding it, the guitar is basically in the same position. So right. it's not, he's not coming down and going right. up, and coming down and going up. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> um, all right, we got to get out of here. Um, let's give away a couple more things. Uh, Earl had graciously uh, brought, uh, Garrett, I'm going to need another name, um, had brought a couple of CDs. So uh, if you agree to autograph these before we go, oh, yeah, we'll, absolutely. we'll uh, give away a couple of these. Um, that would be great. First one is a Naked Guitar, um, which is all solo. All solo. All solo stuff. Mm -hmm. Beautiful project. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, we got to give this away. I can't fall in love with it too much. Um, <laughs> the winner of this one is Go Bob Guitar. Go Bob Guitar. You have just won this, but you haven't won anything, Go Bob, until you email us at service at Legacy Instruction. So send us your mailing address and stuff so we can get this out to you, and we'll have Earl sign this. Um, what a treat. The other project that I have, actually, uh, as well, is uh, the Spice of Life. Spice of Life CD. When did you do this? It was... Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 2000, 
seven, I want to say. Like Something that. like yeah, that, yes, four or yeah. five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, great uh, stuff. Some of it's band stuff, yes. uh, which was very exciting. Mm. Uh, great, some great full band tunes on it. I hadn't heard you with the full, you know, kind of a Latin big band behind yeah. you on a couple <laughs> things. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, the winner of this one is E.W. Taylor. Uh, E.W. Taylor, you have just won uh, the Spice of Life CD. So send us your information, and we will get those out to you as well. As we're kind of wrapping up, let me just give you a couple last-minute announcements so we can let Earl um, go on. Um, we've got uh, our newsletter, which is going to come out next week uh, on, you know, a week from today. Um, we also have this month, we, stu we started a new recording challenge. This is our fourth one. You guys are loving the recording challenges. So uh, last month's was a great success. This month, they have changed the Ben Bob uh, is uh, the one that handles that and is setting that up. And the, the theme for this month is Gone Country. Fabian, you've already, you're already way ahead of me. You've got the, the, the link already up there. Uh, if you're interested in being a part, it doesn't matter what your skill level is. It's a good exercise to play a song from front to back and record yourself doing it. Um, sure. Send it in. It's one of the best things you can do learning how to play. Uh, and you don't have to be, you don't have to, oh, I'm never going to record myself until I'm good enough. Well, if we all waited till we were good enough, we'd never, <laughs> we'd never get anything done. Um, you just have to start. And uh, so I'd encourage you to be a part of that. We have the recording challenge. This is our fourth month we've done this, and you folks are loving it out there. So um, take, take advantage of that. There are so many great guitar events uh, going on this week, and I'm just going to give you the ones that are here in Nashville. I don't even want to give the ones outside of Nashville. There's so many things going on. Um, Thursday night, uh, our good friend Jack Pearson and his band, you know Jack, right, mm -hmm. um, uh, is going to be at the Station Inn uh, with his uh, all-star blues band uh, here in Nashville. So if you're in the Nashville area or within driving distance, check that out. Also, the Chet Atkins convention is going on um, through Friday, if I remember right? Through Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Uh, many of our learners, we actually have the largest crowd of learners that are here watching live lesson um, that we have ever had. Um, thank you all so much for coming and being a, being a part of everything. Um, they're here for the, most of them are here for the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society. What a great convention. So many players are here. Earl's playing. Uh, Doyle Dykes is playing. Yeah. Um, and a thousand other, <laughs> thousand other great uh, finger style players, and they're all just roaming the hallways. And what's the best thing about that convention is you just sit in the, in the, you know, the hotel, and you just watch the players go by, and folks are jamming until midnight. It's a, a blast. Oh yeah, it is a blast. Um, and then if you're within 500 miles of here, uh, check out Muriel Anderson's All Star Guitar Night, which is Friday night. Um, here in Nashville at the new convention center, the Music City Center. Uh, you can probably get tickets online at allstargatarnight.com. Um, her nights are always just legendary events. I guarantee you that'll be the most star-studded event going on in Nashville uh, that night. It's the Mur Muriel Anderson All-Star Guitar Night. Um, all right, a couple last-minute announcements. Our next uh, live lesson we're going to have is uh, next week on uh, the 16th. Um, that is, uh, we're going to have... Continuing in our jazz guitar theme, uh, we're going to have the great uh, jazz guitarist Howard Alden. So oh, yeah. Howard Alden is going to be with us next week. Um, so we had two guests for the price of one this, this month for you guys. Um, so it's going to be a great time with Howard Alden. Um, we also put a bunch of new lessons up on Gibson Skills House. Uh, so check those out. Uh, that's the white button underneath your Ustream window. Uh, if you click that, that gets to all the lessons that we have over at uh, Gibson Skills House this this week, we've got up, um, I did a lesson on uh, the magic of open strings and a lot of things you can do to incorporate open strings in your chord playing. Mm -hmm. um, I have a style lesson on major seventh chords, learning a bunch of different major seventh chord forms. Um, one of the best power workouts we've ever done on finger flexibility. I give you a bunch of different exercises, exercises I learned from Muriel, exercises I learned from Phil Kage, mm -hmm. and uh, all these fantastic players, some really killer stuff in that a workout. Um, that is a tough one. And then our artist interview for the week is uh, uh, Musicians Hall of Fame blues guitarist Will McFarlane, uh, mm -hmm. continuing our interview with Will. So check that out. Some of the other guys have put up some song lessons. Let's see, what do they have up? Metal on Metal by Anvil. That's one of the, the uh, uh, lessons that's up this week. 
um, check them out. That's at the white button underneath the Ustream window. Um, if you like our live lessons, uh, please like us on Facebook or uh, like our videos through Ustream. Um, it is a joy doing these. There's a lot of technical things that have to go through to, to make these happen, as we've already experienced earlier mm -hmm. in the lesson. Uh, but it is a joy to do, and I hope you all have uh, learned a lot and have enjoyed being with us. Um, thank you, Earl, for oh, being thank you. so gracious with your time to oh, squeeze us in. Thank you. This is, this is great. It's, it was really a lot of fun, and uh, I learned a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, what's the last song you're going to play for us? Oh, boy. Uh, here's a song I wrote some years ago, and uh, it's kind of followed me around a little bit. And it, uh, it's a song that I wrote, and uh, I was lucky enough uh, to uh, uh, have Al Jarreau write lyrics mm -hmm. for the song, and it's called This Time. This Time. Thank you so much, Thank Earl. you. Um, check out Earl at uh, earlclue.com. Uh, check out the new CD that's coming out at the end of the month. Um, and, and enjoy playing your instrument. Work hard at it. Making music is a wonderful thing. It's well worth the investment that you're making into it. Hey, we'll see you next time.